Hello and welcome back to Water Cooler, episode number 283, also known as 69 plus 69 plus 69 plus 69 plus 7. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know how the show goes. Hi, Chris Locks. I'm on a kick it with my Corolla Digital Buds, Philly style. With me today, Kalen Beans here. What's going on? Hey, Kalen. Gary Smith's here. What's up? What's up? Hey, Matt Fondelier. Hey, brother. And Mike Dawson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great way to start it. What's going on, Mike? How are you? Oh, I'm great. Are you excited I for... Didn't, uh, I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> Dawson has a, another comedy set coming up this Saturday. I do. I Is do, that going to be I your do. opener on stage? Oh, I don't know, man. You should do that. I, kinda, I, I thought I had funny. an alcohol problem last night. Last night? Yeah. What happened? Well, then my buddy Izzy showed up with a 30-pack, so it, crisis averted. Is that the is that the opening line? <laughs> that's That's... Just get everyone super bummed, and then like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, if I've learned anything from doing live shows in any capacity, start with a downer. Just get the crowd real far mm-hmm. down yeah, that's, that's emotionally, on, dude, yeah. and then you can only bring them up. Mm-hmm. Right. Ideally, that you want sense. them to start the show exactly where they started. Like, you take them through hell, right. and then you bring them back right. to just where they walked in the door. Yeah, it's just like a ride at Universal <clears throat> Studios. You that's end right. up exactly where you got on, but it's... it's <laughs> and you know, it's one of the most popular theme parks in the world. Yeah. Obviously, this is a formula that works. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you just went... Just take them for a ride, but it's when they brilliant. get off... Yeah. They can they can go to the parking lot, go home, and enjoy the rest of their evening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give them twenty five bucks for a picture. It's not like like the Mangria bar crawls we used to go on, where by the fourth oh, bar we were missing like a like a third of the people. <laughs> they just drop off. I'm yeah. Always worried about them. Are they still out there? Some people say they're still out there. Most events have an ending. <laughs> not these. <laughs> just yeah, keeps going. Those you old never Mangria know. bar crawls we went on. It. We'd go to four different bars. And I never remembered the fourth one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You never remember the fourth bar, and there was one empty bus. <laughs> Why? How did one bus just get empty? <laughs> like that's how many people have just dropped off. They were never seen again. Yeah, Doss. So, um, for those who don't know, Dawson did his a stand-up show opening for Brad Williams. We played it. We played the clip on the Adam Carroll show. It was really, really great. Very local. Are we going to be expecting any of that this Saturday? Oh yeah, dude. There's there's definitely. Uh... There's definitely some some local Santa Monica specific some local flavor some local flav yeah now Dawson did I hear correctly when that clip was played on the Corolla show did you take a shot at the city I live in yes, yes. he did that's nice yeah. I like it Brilliant. yeah no he treated it like I a- live in Placentia oh yeah oh, well that he took a big one. one yeah that's what that I thought was a big yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah that was the uh, that was the real crowd yeah that, there. that's that what you the call, that was the the haymaker yeah. mm-hmm. of of the uh, of the bit that slapped as yeah they say. exactly so I'm, I'm really excited are you gonna um if you want to work any more of it out in front of us uh you know off mic obviously like the book, oh he, he already started that he laid that one on me in the parking lot about two hours ago the alcohol problem one? Uh-huh. Oh, that's why you had a big smirk on it because Dawson's like, <laughs> Dawson's like, I have a big alcohol problem, and Gary has a big laughing. smile, and I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> well, we talked about rides that go right back around. I- I'd already been on this ride before. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. It was a good one. So uh, yeah, when Dawson did his his set for Brad Williams a couple days beforehand, he did the set for me, Matt, uh, Kalen, and Haley. Yep. Correct. Right? Yeah. Just a. A, a little four uh, yeah, four person I, audience, and it was I, great. I'd, I'd love to do it for you guys Thursday if if uh, if we're all around. I'd lo- yeah, we can do that before the show. Now, is there going to be like a, a two drink minimum for this <laughs> yeah. particular set? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and you'll be purchasing all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. great. Oh, then, then, then yeah. definitely. Yeah, we're definitely in. Let's do it. Um, all no, right, that'll be cool, man. We did. Uh, fucking got drunk last night and wrote like fucking twelve new jokes. <laughs> I say I haven't I haven't been able to go through them yet to see if they're really funny. <laughs> Can we go over some <laughs> but, of the notes? Uh, so far, I'm one for one. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. So is that the move? Because I think that's a popular thing to do. You you write drunk and edit sober. Yeah, right? sure. is that yeah. is that what it is? Well, the, I mean, edit. it's not done drunk? by choice. <laughs> it's just I only think of really funny shit when I'm fucking shit faced. Yeah, I don't think of funny things other than that. I don't know why. I I tried that with like weed. 
It's a real dangerous career path if I decide to go down it. Yes, many yeah. before you have uh, braved yeah. the exactly. same path. They think like weed or, or alcohol kind of unlocks a, a certain area of your mind that where it gets really creative and you kind of use it as the key. Have sure. you ever seen the cat's eyes in the dark and wonder what they were? <laughs> Bro ideas. <laughs> Garden of your mind. So, yeah, I, I get it. I, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. And uh, Yeah, if you, if you have another writing session tonight. That <laughs> That's what he called no. the vendors now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got like no, a three-day uh, writing session this weekend. I'm, just, I'm having some claws to get through this hangover for the next couple hours mm. and then, and then uh, back on the wagon till uh, tomorrow. What's the next time? Yeah. <laughs> How long are your Thursday? hangovers these days? Oh, dude, they fucking last 48. They're la- they last me probably 24 yeah. now, like to where... I will go the entire next day, like gagging at the thought of putting any more alcohol down my down my gullet. Mm. Like just until you got to do a podcast and there's a fridge full of white claw. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know what? I will feel better if I drink this. Yeah. See, the hair of the dog never worked on me. I just mm. thought I just thought that will make it worse. I don't want to get near near booze ever again on on hangover day. It depends on the time of day that you take that hair. You know, if it's in the afternoonish, late like now, it's a little, it's a lot better than fucking waking up and 10 a.m. Like, fuck, I need a drink. No, yeah. you can't do that. All right, well, that's uh, Jam in the Van this Saturday. Tickets are still available. You can go on their website or Adam Carolla's website and find it. And a real life bank robber is going to be there, reformed. Richard Stanley bought tickets. Oh, yeah. How about that? If he draws a, a big crowd because if you because of you uh, mentioning there that there will be a bank robber at the and I guarantee you your chance to meet a real life bank robber. I love it. Super cool guy. I interviewed a bank robber, not Richard Stanley, but uh, a guy named Clay Toomey on resume. It was like my most popular episode. Yeah, it's just intriguing. How, how people as rob far banks. as going to prison for a crime goes, it doesn't get much better than bank robber. You're a fucking celebrity, especially if you go in and you're a bank robber. Especially, uh, well, I mean, I, I've been, I've only met nonviolent bank robbers. If that, you know what I mean? He was nonviolent. He, yeah, that's he never what I'm used a gun. That's what I'm saying. Like, like uh, I've never met the ones that shot up into yeah. the into the ceiling and made First everybody bank, get fucking down the ground. A note, chicken scratch, thirteen thousand dollars, <laughs> just like that. Hands the lady a note, and she goes, "Do you need a bag?" And he's like, "No, I brought my own." Oh my God, that's what happens. I mean, I've, I've, uh, when I was checking out items at TJ Maxx, and I noticed that the guy in front of me, um, or the guy who I was checking out the items for, had switched the stickers for all the really expensive. I mean, expensive in quotes because TJ Maxx but purses that were usually like 120 bucks. I was ringing up, and uh, the screen says, "Oh, this is a vase that's uh, four dollars on clearance. What are you like?" <laughs> And I look at it, I'm like, this is from a whole different category. And I, and I look at the guy, I'm like, sorry, this is a whole different category. Let me, let me uh, double check this and get a price check. And he flashes garden shears, and he's like, put it in the bag. And I went, no problem. <laughs> and I just, it's, it's just, you don't even garden think about it. Garden yeah. shears. Is he going to snip you? I don't know. I don't want to know, <laughs> Matt. I didn't want to know. If you have garden shears flashed See, now at you. That would be, yeah. now possessing a weapon or presenting something as a weapon, that makes it a, uh, an armed robbery. That makes it. Like uh, yeah. as far as the difference between not showing garden shears, yeah, and showing them is like fucking fifteen years. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I've I've been part of an armed robbery. Oh my Jesus, God. you yeah. were robbed at Shear Point. At Shear Point, yes, <laughs> I was robbed at Shear Point. That's scary, man. Technically, two Shear Points when that blade was open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm Thank watching. <laughs> That's. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke grenade, and, I, and I, it just exploded in front of me, Matt. Nice job. Um, I, uh, I'm watching The Sopranos. Sopranos? I don't know how you Sopranos. Sopranos. And, uh, for the first time. Sopranos! <laughs> there we go. See, this, this is how we do it. We workshop on this show, and that's how we get there. I love it. Pixel fun? <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> um, so I'm watching The Sopranos, and... Bro-panos? Right? <laughs> The bro bronos, the bro bro bros, <laughs> the bro bro bros. <laughs> watching Just the bro bro bros, um, and I mean, look, and I'll be honest, if I was watching a scene and a guy either pulled out a pistol or garden shears, I would be a lot more worried about those garden shears showing up on mm. camera. 
So that's and so same thing in real life. No, probably not in real life. Guy, if a guy put a get put a get at me, I'd probably be very scared. So yeah. never mind. Um, anyway, Chris, real fast before we move on, am I the only one who thinks you're missing a big opportunity if your profile doesn't say held at SharePoint? Like you need to put that in your Instagram yeah. bio. Yeah, I just think put that on your robbed profile. It, robbed at Spirit SharePoint. I would like that, but then there's so many follow up questions from mm. the from the randos who don't listen. It's engagement, baby. You know what? In our um, in our mystery mystery uh, meal bag. So you call it the claw because it's like uh, the claw. I, well, I, <laughs> I forget the name of our restaurant. Mystery bag. Mystery, mystery bag. bag. Yeah. Mystery bag. We should we should have a menu item called the Rando Sando. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that. That's a great one. one the only thing you're guaranteed yeah. is yeah. bread. It's a Sando. Yeah. yeah. It's a Rando Sando. I like. I've been thinking about the mystery bag a lot lately. Just uh. You know, restaurants are starting to open back up, and now we actually have options. Like, where do where do mm-hmm. we want to eat today? Yeah. And mystery bag just seems more and more attractive. It's just a problem day. solver. It really I think, is. I think the money maker though is going to be queso fresco. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah we we got a whole food court coming up. I was thinking um, they should do that with I wish like Netflix and uh, HBO Max and they did stuff like that too. Random, just play a random movie. Yeah. yeah. Play like. The only the only service I've ever seen do that was FX for a while had every single Simpsons episode to a certain degree. Um, probably just didn't play like the current season, but uh, they had a button where it's just play a random episode and a random episode of the show that you really want just a random episode to come on anyway. The Simpsons to come on. Perfect. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want. So I wish more services did that. Netflix, I know you're listening. All these cell phones listening to us right now. All the phones. Netflix has that. They have just play random episode button. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's shit. buried. It, it's it's buried. It's not like the easiest thing. To that find. must be new, and that's probably because uh, I still I still want to get credit for that. Sure, for thinking it. Absolutely, you know, it was your idea. Thanks. You know, a Thanks. friend of mine, his brother in law, invented the skip intro button. Really? Yeah. That's a- he should be awarded with the highest. Yeah, Nobel Peace, Nobel Peace yeah, Prize. Like, probably. Peabody. Well, I, hold, I, I revere what we that. I've never met the man, but I revere him for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, He's I a trailblazer. I, just, I, I hope that the people at Netflix do as well. Yeah. 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 Unless unless uh, the people who write the songs don't get royalties from it. And I'd feel bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd feel bad too, but I'd still do it. <laughs> saves, them, saves time. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, anyway, we got a lot of comments here. Uh, Matt. You have a Chez Fondelay? Yes. Yes, I do. But I don't see any any dice on, in front of me like I usually do. What's going on? Will that be explained? Well, or is if it... anybody listened to the last Patreon, <laughs> I think you know exactly what went on. Oh, let's just tease it. Yeah, sign, you have yeah. to sign up for Patreon to know <laughs> why. What? I, I'm thinking back on it. I don't know if you guys uh, have seen Terminator 2 recently, but there's a moment when Sarah Connor is behind a chain link fence and she's watching the children play in the playground, and then a nuclear explosion goes off, and they all just burst into ash, and she's just trapped behind the fence until she <laughs> explodes as well. That's kind of what it felt like last episode. <laughs> and thus, the the game shan't be no more. Cheese ball has been melted. Wow. That also happens to be the scene where my dad was cut from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. no. So oh, many, many lives have been scene. destroyed as a result. Wow. It's worlds colliding. I am, so many. Any I'm sorry for the part that I played in it. You know. Wait. So is the cheese ball just uh, is it just no more? It's just done. no more. It's done. It turned wow. into a pumpkin. Uh-oh. That's right. Ex- expired. It is wow. expired. Guys, we killed it. Got more. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> we you killed destroyed it. my dreams. <laughs> um, I'm not clapping. Yes. Having said that, I do still think we need to. <laughs> Thank you, Dawson. <laughs> we need to Sorry. all take some Pepsi before we uh, come on the air. Dawson is the only one out of all of us one. that has a mute button. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to use my internal pop filter. It just didn't work. Um, I do have initial thoughts for a different way to approach the ranking of the cheeses, mm. but uh, the dodge, the cheese ball format has just been destroyed. It's, it's not happening anymore. Yeah. So oh. that's not uh, today's Chez Fondelé. Today I have a more oh. traditional Chez Fondelé because it was my wife's birthday. A more and, cliche uh, Fondelé. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Take me when I'm down. Oh. Um, Dang, drink it. Have another claw, dog. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> guys. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's what's happening. Dude, okay. Well, this R. I. is it. I, I, I have, <laughs> R. I. Cheese? R. I. Cheese. 
And I really miss. I mean, I'm, I'm bummed that I won't get to hear any more of the the bonus the bonus categories like yeah. Trace Adia. Mm-hmm. I was really looking forward to, mm. to. I was looking forward to it as well. Can we not get those again? <laughs> or? Fuck you! No. <laughs> That's why I played. Oh. You think when they when a movie. When they're working on a movie and then it, the production gets canceled, they just give the screenplay to everybody? So you're no, gonna, they, no. Just, they just cancel Michael Bean and then release. They just cut Michael <laughs> Bean from <laughs> the Michael movie. Bean. That's right. Kalen. Yeah. Terminator 2. Yeah. I mentioned that. I've That name, Terminator 2, has been mentioned around Kalen every once in a while. And he 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 gets upset. He gets visibly upset. Uh, yeah, It's like a bit of PTSD from it. Not because my dad was cut from it, but because... Growing up, I would always say, oh, your dad's an actor? What's he in? And i go, Terminator. And they always go, oh, I love Terminator. Oh, it's so good. It's <laughs> great. The when one. the guy gets shot and like he's all metal and yeah. he splits into different pieces like, and, no. and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm like, no, that's that's the second Terminator. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, the first one's good, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, your dad got paid for his time there on the set. But when you get cut from a movie, is there mailbox money? Is there royalties? Or are you just cut out because you, you don't have an on-screen performance? I don't know. I mean, it is in like the director's cut. So maybe there's a cut from that people that get the director's cut, but it it was like just it was like one image of him and oh, yeah. that was it. It wasn't really anything anyway. Yeah, I doubt you get mailbox money if I doubt it but too. I, but it's it's curious to know because you know if there's if there's one fucking stubborn union besides the teachers, it's the actors. Yeah, or what if you're uncredited? You know, a lot of people do roles where they're uncredited. Sure. Yeah, like me in every Adam Carolla movie. Yeah, there you go. How's that mailbox money? Actually, I am credited for ADR in uh, in um, Road Hard, the Hammer. Oh, okay. oh, nice. Yeah, no, no, no I'm, the, I'm the I'm the first voice, the first noise you hear in Road Hard. Right. Yeah, I know that absolutely uncredited. Yeah, but it's it's Easter eggy, yeah, right? It's great. Yeah. yeah, I think it's Easter eggy. Yeah. I wrote a song for Road Hard, Doesn't and Adam didn't bills. pick it. So Don't. there you go. It wasn't that good of a song, but I felt like I had an edge from one knowing Adam to seeing the movie before writing the song. (laughs) Still didn't work out. I'll play it one day. Can't all be home runs. I'd like to hear that. Um, All right. I think I did hear it. It's good. I'm sure it is. Freaking awesome. You know, I'll I'll play it at Jam in the Van. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Fuck you, Adam! <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fold in that I'm the first voice in the hammer. Yeah. I didn't get a credit. Yeah. yeah. So I'm watching, it's just, watching the credits go by. Dawson and my set, because I'm playing... Uh, in order of appearance. I'm playing acoustic at Jam the Van 2. Dawson and my sets will just be us griping over yes. Road Hard yes. <laughs> and our roles yeah. in Road Hard. All right. And uh, now our boss. <laughs> yeah, and now the guy who we... we the guy who we've been bitching about the yeah. whole time. Bring him to the stage. All right, and and, and uh, Kalen has a flick in the bean today, which I'm really excited about. Slash nervous because he said I got a full pager. Ooh, oh! I guess we're gonna find out the director's name and the actors no. and other things they were in. No, and you may know this guy from. That might come up. Once. Okay, good. All right. I know. Uh, I know a lot of people listen to this podcast, but we got a little baby face Kalen over here. Did anybody uh, notice I that? I did oh, notice that. Yeah. <laughs> He yeah. shaved. Unfortunately. I did. Why? What happened? Girlfriend. I know, actually, she much prefers me to have facial oh, okay. hair. I just That's was right way there. too careless with shaving mm. the beard. I you went too it. short, and then I just nicked it, uh, and there was just a patch right next. I just I couldn't fix it after that. Happens, it was either yeah. this or a goatee, and so did you I just took it all off. Why did you do the goatee <laughs> for yeah, just what, the what, day? What happened to the goatee? What's wrong I with the goatee? I couldn't go through with it. It actually didn't, I didn't think it looked that bad, but. Just for I the just, day. Like, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, and even, the goat. even, even oh. a step yeah. further than that, the first time I had a mustache was when I fucked up shaving my beard. And just said, fuck it, today's the day. I'm going for a mustache. Mm. Same. So I've you had... should have gone mustache and showed us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking walked. It, 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 it'll be a hero moment. I want to see that next time. Maybe. Yeah, same my, thing. Then my girlfriend definitely won't be happy. Uh, <laughs> she might be okay with a goatee. Don't I, don't like know, the duster, huh? I don't know about that one. Who, whose body is it, Kalen? Is it hers? Because it sounds like it's her body now, the way, the way that you're acting. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Gary talks. It is. It is. Gary talk out. <laughs> uh, I, same thing with me. I uh, when I've had a mustache uh, a, the few times in my life, it's mostly one time it was just because of a wedding. Like every all the groomsmen did it just to, just to in unity. 
in solidarity, but... That chick was mo- stoked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bride. Yeah. yeah. But uh, most of the times it's always been because I either set it to the wrong number on my buzzer, my mm-hmm. trimmer, and then I just hit it before I actually didn't set it at all. So it just shaved off a good patch and I went, okay, mustache time. And then until it just goes clean all the way, or Gina Grad says that my mustache makes her uh, vagina look like the Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> That's something she has said to me, and I'll never forget it. All right, let's get going with some listener comments. Now it's time for listener comments. All right. And uh, once again, these are all Clawments and Clan nope, found nope, on. They're just they are just Clawments. Don't do that. Uh, from our Please Facebook page, facebook.com slash groups. I love slash how it's just become a gimmick. It's just going to happen all the time. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. Slash group slash Bobo Army. Boy Army Worldwide LLC Nation. Answer four questions. Answer some questions. Get most of them right. Yeah. And I'll probably let you in. And Gary might let you in. <laughs> Very like, easy to join. It's my favorite I, place on the internet. I definitely rejected the aforementioned Kaylin's girl. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Before, before yeah, you, you did. I did. See, it's not that easy. So if you are in, good for you. And uh, but still, everybody try to get in. As I said, yeah. It's a nice community, favorite place on the internet. Before we get, before I read some of these comments, first off, want to mention that uh, our Patreon, we're do we have a, a new tier, several, several new tiers. You get the outros. You One, do. you get you get outros. <laughs> yeah, we we've embargoed all of our outros for the remainder of this series, and uh, you can only hear the outros to segments on Patreon. And there are some great outros. Yes, amazing ones, and more coming in every day. You yeah. will not get them here. <laughs> it is worth it just for the outros alone. Also, um, the new tiers. So originally we had, if you want to uh, listen to just the audio, just like most people are listening now, you can subscribe to Patreon. You get that. Um, if you want to enjoy the video of the Patreon episodes, we release one uh, every week as well. Um, you can you can subscribe to that and upgrade to that. And then we also have one where it's plugs. If you want us to plug anything you want, your business, a TV show you're enjoying, uh, a food you like, We'll do that too, and that's a, that's another tier. So those are the three original tiers. But what are the new ones? We've added a bunch at the existing video level too that include the uh, movie night, so you can get like the video and the movie night, or the audio and the movie night. Just what's the, the movie bars. night? What is that? That's where we're all going to sit around and we're going to watch a movie, and we're going to sync it up with Netflix, so people we can tell them like, all right, we're pushing pushing play right now, and then you can watch our commentary while you watch the movie. We can annoy the fuck out of you while you're trying to watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. What are, yeah. we, what are we doing first? We haven't decided yet, but okay. we do have some... We've been trying to pool some options that are available on Netflix. Yeah. We will be releasing the first one this month. Let's say in the sweet spot of 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. Length yeah. is key. We're not... Yeah. We're, we're going to do gonna, what we can, yeah. Yeah, we're not doing the shiny here. But it's content, right baby. It's Avengers. content. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. there's a new Molo Money tier that includes all four things we now <laughs> offer, which is the movie night, <laughs> the audio, the video, and the plug. That's Molo Money, baby. Boom. See, and Molo let me Money. tell you, we do have some Molo Ballers in our group. We do. There you some go. Some Molo Ballos. Molo Ballos. <laughs> So, is there a Molo Ballo tier? <laughs> I, Let's oh, not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, okay, all right. We won't get ahead of ourselves. And also, um, big ups to Zach Beercan. He sent us a little care package. Uh, over to the shop from his business. And if anybody wants to see that, I guess you just go to our Patreon stories or something. You can, you our can Patreon see lens. Exactly what he sent us because it was very generous and yes. very nice. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why we're dancing around it. It's uh, weed. <laughs> it's weed. It's an undisclosed <laughs> product. <laughs> an undisclosed <laughs> amount of weed. Send us a bunch of weed, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> a big, big, and big bag of weed. Of pot. I can see why we danced around it now <laughs> yeah. that we did this. Yes. It was uh, a big, big bag of weed. Um, this goes out to a lot You know of what he did, too? He he really taped it up in the bubble wrap because uh, it's very... Illegal to say. Aromatic. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> illegal to say. <laughs> Look, I've I've used I've used the FedEx guy as my say drug aromatic. dealer before, but this I mean this is just straight blatant disregard for the law. I, I don't think it's his real last name, which is good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. And I can see now. I see why we, we didn't say anything. <laughs> now it's all making sense yeah. in retrospect. Why we shouldn't say anything. Cops don't listen to this. Yeah. Shit. Show. All right, let's go to some comments here. Uh, let's start it off with uh, Zach Danbury, another Zach that listens to us. He had a question for Doss Angelus. Mm. Hey, Doss, I just ordered the new Smoke and Kills album. Thank you. 
That's and uh, is that still available or what's going on with that? Uh, I believe the pre-sale is gone, but I'm putting in an order today for 700 records. So there'll be like 300 left. There'll be like 250 left over. I just got to find a place to nice. fucking store them. A are cool you, dry place. Are you going to hand number them? I will. No. Oh. Um, they'll they'll be. Yeah, uh, considerably expensive, but they'll be yeah. at thesmokingkills.com. dot com. Cool. Hey, my friend was in band. He hand numbered like the first like thousand, so you always knew which which number you had. Really? Yeah. That's just, cool. Yeah. Just like wrote it in the corner. Like yeah. Just uh, yeah. Make sure the shrink wrap's not on it. though. Dawson, I think you should do that, and then you should remove the number sixty nine and sell that at an extreme premium. Ooh. Oh, think about that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dawson, that's one night of getting drunk with a silver sharpie. Come on, bro. I we like got to do this. I like it. I like it. I like it. We'll talk. I'm gonna have them shipped here. So. Or can you write them as like sixty nine minus sixty eight sixty nine? Oh wait, uh, <laughs> well, that's that too. Much math. But too Dawson, much here, math. I just I just thought of something. If you said you're ordering seven hundred records, you could also pull out number six ninety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. See, I'm making money for you over here, bro. Malo money. Mal- These are limited edition ideas here. I love it. Well, anyway, Zach says uh, he ordered the new album, but he doesn't own a record player, and he wanted to experience the songs in all their glory. So he needed help picking out a record player to go with. Any suggestions for around two hundred bucks would be awesome. Thanks, man. And uh, I agree. I am. I once again, I have no idea how record players really operate. I've never really used one. I, I couldn't put a record into a record player and pick the song. Go here oh, we dude. go. I got a radio station, fucking quality Panasonic turntable. <laughs> it's fuck. It's so badass with the nice touch button. It's, yeah. It's got a light. You can pop up a little fucking light. Straight DJ rig. See? But that, that's way too fucking expensive. I answered him. Did you see my answer? I did. I didn't, I didn't uh, put it in my paper, though, because I thought oh. you could just say it okay. aloud. Well, here's a, the, there, are, there are two rules uh, with buying any audio equipment, and it's probably the same for technology across the board. Uh, never buy the cheapest and never buy the most expensive. Number one, go middle of the road and you will be satisfied. Yeah. Number two, and you got to get into the dimensions part of everything, the heavier a piece of equipment is, the better stuff that's in it. So if you got a choice between two $200 turntables and one weighs a little bit more than the other, get the one that weighs more. Well, here's a question I, like I that. have that he may not have thought of. Don't you? Aren't you going to need some independent speakers to connect to them if you don't have uh, those already? Yes, there are a whole bunch of. I had to buy a a phono amp for my turntable. It's this tiny little thing that takes the RCA jacks and it bumps it up to line level. Audio talk. We all know. Yeah. Sure. Um, so a lot of turntables have them built in. And that will be something that you'll want to look at, that it has a phono amp built in, and you can just plug it into your stereo receiver. Hmm. Matt, uh, you seem like a guy that w- that got into records for a while. I don't know why. Hmm. Is that true? The only time I ever had a record player was when I was like four years old, and my parents got me like one of those little plastic ones, like a Fisher-Price kind of one. So I was right. <laughs> yeah. And they, they uh, ever since they, then. Some of, those, <laughs> some of those are not bad, but... I wouldn't recommend that. Too I'd, light. I'd recommend yeah, getting a, just getting a good middle of the road turntable yeah. that has a phono amp built into it that you can just plug lot, into your regular stereo system. A lot of like the tech products out there, you have your consumer and your and professional. You can email me, Danbury. Oh, there you go. You, you can email me and I'll I'll, I'll shoot you. Brad Williams did the same thing. Brad Williams called me like three months ago, and he's like. Uh, my mom just gave me all her old records. I don't have a turntable. And I'm like, all right, I'll put a package together for you. Nice. So I told him all the shit to buy. I can do that for you, Zach. Yeah, so when That's you're picking cool. middle of the road, it's you have your your uh, consumer side, you have your professional side, but there's a whole other area, prosumer. Prosumer. Is, prosumer yeah. is where you want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Prosumer. Look into that. All right. Katie Coleman, she had a question. She says, uh, my husband and I are going to San Diego for Memorial Weekend as a last as a last getaway before our daughter arrives in August. Hey, all right. Ooh. Ooh. Congratulations. That That's was, a, is that a baby moon? Yeah, that was where I went for mine, too. Well, uh, she says, I plan on going back to re-listen to Matt's Shea Fondelay segment he did a few weeks ago. Well, Katie, segments. Thank you. <laughs> there, there are a few segments uh, on mm-hmm. San Diego. What other suggestions... 
uh, do you all have for a quick getaway in San Diego? Things to do that aren't completely centered <laughs> around drinking, obviously. Well, the first thing I would suggest is that if you are eight months pregnant, you do not go to the bathroom where TikTokers take over for 45-minute waits. <laughs> yeah. That would not be a good idea. Yeah. So, okay, noted. One, can, uh, can pregnant women ride birds or line no. scooters? No. Yeah. Are you freaking kidding? What about throw axes? Not at her, Matt. Well, you know, let them be the ones to throw it. Uh, throwing axes could be fun. That's what uh, I did. There's a, there, assuming you can tolerate drinking being around you, there is a fun adult arcade in the gas lamp where they have like beers and wine and shit, and then you can play cool video games. That's yeah. fun. I used to live there for a couple of years, and um, the coolest things, the cool, I had a condo in uh, Mira Mesa, which is right by Miramar, Top Gun. And you just don't want to live there the day of the Miramar Air Show. Sure. Mm, you, can, you can seriously throw a fucking rock at a fucking F- F-14, whatever. Fucking, they're like right above the fucking wow. complex. Um, but we don't suggest is, doing that at all, ever. There yeah. is an old, old, old Italian restaurant in San Diego in the, in the gas lamp. Um, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, totally old school Italian shit. And then yeah. there's also this place that Matt went to. Called Urban Wood, but they're thinking about <laughs> they're thinking about changing the name to Blackhawk. Yeah, yeah, but uh, a um, lot of swallow paralysis. Yep, yeah. the Yelp reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So a lot of a lot of options. Um, and Mission Mission Bay is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Yeah, you can just go go do a picnic in Mission Bay. That sounds lovely. Something like that. I agree. So there you go, Katie, and uh, enjoy your weekend there, Ryan Hetrick. He says, uh, I've never bought it in my life, but when, uh, but this is what happens when you're listening to Water Coulter Grocery Store. And he bought the variety pack of White Claw, number Good three. man. So look at us. We're influencers. Casey Peters, he says, uh, I'm sure we'll disagree on some of these, but there are some songs out there that are... The Claw. There are some songs out there that are simply perfect. Here are a few of mine. Don't Speak by No Doubt. Great song. <coughs> Hotel California by The Eagles. One by Metallica. And then he says Brain Damage is Better Than Eclipse. Pink Floyd. What are some of yours? What are just some songs that you listen to and just think, that's perfect? Closing Time by Semisonic. That is correct. That is the correct answer, Matt. Thank you. That's a great one. Yeah, that song's so good. It's amazing. That's why no more relief pitchers don't walk out to that song. Like they it, should. That's yeah. totally a great relief pitcher song. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, imagine. Here, I'm going to play. We had, uh, or like an MMA fighter. That'd be a great walkout yeah. song for an MMA fighter. Well, you, you find go. that. Yeah. Connor McGregor is coming out. <laughs> when the Dodgers had uh, Hideo Nomo uh, as a relief pitcher, mm. the, 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 the stadium music guy really missed a chance. You take that Phil Collins song, I Don't Care Anymore, and just yeah. play the end of it, and it would just go, Nomo. No mo. It would just, would have just been that and Phil's drums would have been the greatest entry song of all time. Yeah, I agree. So they're they're just some perfect baseball <coughs> baseball songs to walk out to. So Matt, imagine. Yeah, what's up? Alternate universe, sliding doors. You have now become the relief pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, the closer. My dad would be so proud. Can't bet on yourself anymore, though. All right, it's true. You're up now. The Dodgers are up one. And you have a, now, you have a, a oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. I'm From the, the bullpen, I'm throwing the arm. Oh, just working the arm. Please out. welcome number twenty-two, your relief pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Matt Fundley. <laughs> yeah, dude. Everybody's so amped right now. <laughs> Can you feel it? God, Font Lear really enters the field it. to exuberant praise. Closing time. <laughs> Matt, Matt steps Open out from the bullpen on to, onto the outfield. Just soaks it in the lights. This is game seven. Guys, he looks out into the night sky. He's 10 and 0 for the season in closing. <laughs> Takes off his hat, soaks it in. Yeah. Closing <sighs> time. This has got to be a satisfying sniff. You got to breathe in the air. It smells like victory. I got to approach the mound though, so that the first pitch is timed. 
<laughs> At the exact moment. Yeah. Oh, it's coming, coming up. Go, up. Go, 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 go. No time for warm-ups, man. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh! For some reason they allow the music yeah. to play during the yeah, pitch. During the actual pitch. <laughs> Strike three. This song is not a perfect song, and I'll tell you why. Oh, oh boy! It's for really? You know what? I'm gonna I'm go. Be a <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm. I have a legitimate beef with this song. That song okay. is per- as perfect it. as it gets. What are you talking? The, it one of the stupidest lines. One of the stupidest lines ever written in rock and roll is "Finish your whiskey or beer." <laughs> Say whiskey Why? Or... The claw. Oh, I can't do better than that, dude. So fin- there's so time many. To finish there's your whiskey so many. Or beer. Drink whiskey and beer your whiskey all the time or beer. at a bar. Yeah. Right. But still, it's uh, name a whiskey. Fucking Jack Daniels. Name a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Maker's Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that Jimmy. line, that line in that song bothered me from day one and still mm-hmm. does. Well, tell nobody you, uh, talks like that. Is my point. I see. Nobody. If nobody says you finish your drink. No one says finish your whiskey or beer. I can see you saying that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I. I really don't see an issue with that. That doesn't. Well, that... I. I do. Well, so there. Do you know what that song's about? Yeah, it's about the closing <laughs> baseball. It's about the birth of his daughter. It's about baseball. There so yeah, it's a metaphor for. Uh, that's why, like some. Of, um, so some of the lines are like. Like, people uh, don't know that the doctors giving the birth were really drunk, and that's why he's yeah. like, finish your whiskey <laughs> or beer, because they're doctors. They're because not the regular bar patrons. Closing, <laughs> closing yeah. time, open all the doors and let you out into the world. That's closing time, turn all of the lights <laughs> on you, Matt. over Chris. every boy and every girl. No, I need Matt to explain it. Like, I see the lyrics. Over <laughs> Matt's glory. <laughs> Dumb. See? Matt, explain All right, it. Dawson, what's a perfect song? Phil Collins in the air tonight. Play it, Chris. Let's go. All right, let's, we can uh, that's pretty good. All right, one. Dawson is warming up in the bullpen at the San Francisco <laughs> Giants Actually, game. This probably has been used. This probably has been used as a Ladies fucking gentleman thing. It's the bottom of the ninth year here at Candlestick Park. <laughs> Sure, where our team plays yeah. at the stick. We're at the stick. Sure, this can be this, this can be in over 1980s. a decade ago. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> this, this is in the 1980s, oh, yeah. Matt. The Beatles are playing here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Dawson with time period appropriate facial hair. Mm-hmm. The count is three and two. Bases loaded. It's looking a little rough there for am the home I team. On the mound, or am I so out of we the need to bring out. You know, you're it's not often that the baseball the player have to play interrupts the, the fucking announcer while they're trying to bring the fucking player out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Michael Clausen. <laughs> Clausen Dawson. Uh, God, we gotta like, fire the, the, like the, the last music time. stadium guy. They had not, the, not the VO guy. VO guy is great. It's hmm. weird no, that the is, guy travels from LA the, to San Francisco. The music guy and fucks up the music in both teams. You're saying it starts soft. Pretty much sounds like an imperfect song to me. So far. Oh no! Already complaining so many, about it. So much nuance in this song. Is that cheering in the regular mix of the song? I just turned on the. the oh. turn on. Here's Dawson looking around, yeah. taking in the crowd. The crowd is mystified <laughs> why they're hearing this song <laughs> right now at a baseball game. Yeah. They're totally quiet. Jaws uh, are open. Everybody's into it, dude. The batter yeah, on deck's like, I got this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those the montages. Drummer, the, the, the drummer, the catcher starts to get scared, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck, this guy throws hard. This is a very good song, but I would argue Dawson loves it for the same reason we love Closing Time. Mm. It's a time period specific. Yeah. Right. Mm, This song is timeless. I don't disagree. Closing Time has a time. It's Closing Time. Got you there. So it's not really timeless. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Game, set, match. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. (laughs) One time I was at an open mic. And there's this drunk girl sitting next to me at the bar, and she like sees me, and I'm I have my guitar in my lap because there's nowhere to put your guitar, so you have to hold it. And she's like, "Are you gonna play?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "You're gonna play Closing Time, are you?" Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "No." And I went up there and I fucking played Closing Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did? Yes. Wow. Were you not uh, planning to play? I wasn't planning on it, but I'm like, "Don't talk yeah. shit on Closing Time." Now you, you get Closing her. Time. <laughs> Should have told her. Now I am. Now I am. Chris is force feeding people. I wasn't. That's great. This song anyway, just reminds yeah. me of The Hangover. Maybe that's my mm. my generation's. Th- I mean, obviously it's a, you know it, it's a incredible song, but come on, Phil, start it already. Kick, grin. kick it open. 
I know where you've been. All right, Kalen, what's your perfect it's song? All been a pack I don't have to play lies. it, but I just I just want to know. I don't have a perfect song. Mm. I don't have strong feelings about music. <laughs> Get that drop. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's a t-shirt. You don't listen to a lot of music. I don't. I don't, I don't have strong feelings you gotta about have, like, music. You have song. Yeah, you're not there's wrong. something. There's like a sublime song that you love. That's got to be like your favorite song. It's like a perfect song to you. No. No. Every song you listen to, you find a flaw in it. You go, this can't be the perfect Either that or every song I listen to is perfect. On Sunday when I was rehearsing the toolbox, I did uh, 38 specials rocking into the night. And I I went through it a few times and Kayla was in the room. And I'm like, Kayla, you ever hear this song? Nope. Kayla just doesn't listen to music. And that was the end of the conversation. (laughs) Yeah, that's, that sounds no, about right. That's a no, good game no. Hey, yeah, this is a cool song, dude. No, I, who are these guys? No follow-up whatsoever. Just, nope. End yes. of discussion. Game so I don't, I don't have strong feelings about music. <laughs> really, I want to wear that shirt on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, can, we might have something like that coming up. We're working on it. Um, Gary, and yours, just real quick. What's your, what do you think is your favorite or perf- your perfect song? I don't know. I've been thinking about it for a while. I don't know. I don't know that I could pick a single song. I, is it like that thing where you'll never t- say like uh, somebody or something is a ten because you don't want mm, you don't want to see. limit it? Sort of, but I hate those people who won't play that game. <laughs> I would say, I, you know, I don't think it's perfect for everyone, but I find myself going back to Empire State of Mind by Jay-Z quite, oh, sure. quite a bit. Yeah. That, that's a song I really, really like. Pretty great. That's a great song. And uh, that's the Alicia Keys, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's killer. It's just killer an excellent, excellent. And if song. you were the closing pitcher for the New York Yankees, oh! there you go. that might just be the perfect song to come <laughs> out to. Okay. Hit it, Chris! <laughs> <laughs> it, it really would be a perfect closer walkout yeah, mi- for a Yankee. <laughs> Easy E's Boys in the Hood is a perfect song. That's a good song. Bring out Gary. I keep thinking every one of these songs starts with this applause. <laughs> <laughs> it's a live version. No, not the live version, dude. Bottom no. of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth. We know a lot of people in the crowd tonight don't have strong opinions about music. <laughs> but we think you're going to love this next one as we bring out our closing picture. Some people call him GPS. Some people call him Patch, but we call him just Gary. Orgy. Yeah. yeah. All right. I like that. That was a good one. Baseball. Nice job, Gary. I love how the perfect song needs to be what a relief pitcher can, can come out to. We kind of figured that out. Yep. That's to be the, uh, the correlation there. I dig Cracker, it. Cracker, teen I angst. Dig it. That's a perfect song. I think Jay Z's drummer is Tony Royster Jr., who was in a. Like, Kenny, Kenny Royster Rogers. Kenny Rogers Royster. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That was a long trip to that Seinfeld joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got. I mean, I've like pages more of uh, comments, but well, we can limit the comments. We have to read every comment every week. Sh- oh, you, you're right. You're right. We don't. So I'll just um, let me just let me just get to some. I can save it for next week. Why don't I'll we pick do that? A couple more. All right. Uh, let's see Give here. The people, what they want, Chris. All right. Uh, Rob Collier says, "I was totally against Dawson until he rolled the sixteen in cheese ball." I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're on the video. Now he's on my team you can see me burning a hole in the back of Chris's head. head. And the 16 is only three away from a 19. How about this? Lindsay Price Pretty says, strong. Matt, the the Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's sell moon pies. So look into oh, there, there you for, your, for your moon pies. Uh, Peter Morris Mortis asks, thinking back to school, did everyone Rig, have- Change your first name to Rigger. Rigger Mortis. Sure. Rigger Mortis. Thinking, Smith. 69. Thinking back to school. (laughs) Thinking back to school. Did everybody have math class in the morning and never in the afternoon, or was that just me? You read. (laughs) I'm just picking whatever. That was just you. (laughs) It was just yeah. I think I I had it all different times of day. Yeah. Yeah. Same. But I only 69. Except in college. Come on. I went to my first engineering class in college, and I was at 7 a.m. and I was drunk and I didn't understand anything. (laughs) 
Plot twist. I changed my <laughs> changed my major <laughs> after I got thrown in jail. All right, I've, I've hold on. Anyway, buy the book. I have two more <laughs> comments here. Oh, God. We're just going to move past Austin saying he changed his major after he got thrown in jail? Yep, we are going to because you right. got to buy the book. What's the next comment? <laughs> the book tease. Yeah, okay. Well, this one is from uh, – we actually had two, two comments from people in this room. Oh, really? This first one's from Gary Patrick Smith. He said, someone posted uh-huh. in this group that it was insane that I use a fake name. He's a Steve. When I order food over the phone, I thought about it and decided maybe they were right. So I called lunch today and used my f- my real first name, Gary. I even I didn't. This isn't this wasn't said there, but I called in and I said they said what's your name? I said Gary, G A R Y. Ah, uh, that was exactly how I did it. it. Now Gary posted the picture and he said, "Never again, I'm Steve forever," <laughs> because the picture looked like it said J J Y Y Jerry Jerry It looked like maybe it was Jerry and the R was really spaced out to look like a Y the yeah. lowercase R It was ref But all right Steve Steve yeah. lunch. I go with Joe honestly I'll, I'll tell you what I went to that exact same place today for lunch use Steve zero problems yeah. oh. <laughs> we, were, we were good to go There you go and then lastly uh Dos Angeles put a comment in there I did. I was drunk. I'm sorry. I don't know if you're drunk. Oh, so, I know I was. Doesn't it end with him saying that he's drunk? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. saw that one. It does. Okay. <laughs> it says, hey, you guys. Hey, guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey. He says, hey, you guys. Thanks. I love you, drunk. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. I have a drop. I love you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. I actually had one. That's great. Wow. How the, why, wait, hold on. <laughs> why do you have that drop? And how has it never been played on the show? He has the and, drop because I did that once before on this show. Oh, so it hasn't been played on the show? To be found. I don't think it has more than that one time. I don't know. I really yeah. don't know. I just saw it, and I've always wanted to play it, but never so found the opportunity. Sleuth. There's some super sleuth out there that can solve this mystery Indeed. by next week. Here we are. I think Casey Peters sent me that. Um, all right. Dos Angeles writes. the guy who makes the outros that we withhold from these people? That's, mm. Yes, that's right. Okay. says, hey, you guys, thanks for being a part of this. You guys make me smile, and I'm grateful. I'm also a little drunk, but mostly grateful. Grazie. Loved there it. There yeah. you go. Best place on the internet. Absolutely. Right there. Facebook.com slash group slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC. Thank you so much for writing in. <laughs> Everybody, we appreciate it. I'll keep some of these for next week, too, because we got some good ones, and I... And, uh, now, the reason Chris is right just in. clapping right now is because we're withholding the outro for the claw men's. Yes, that's right. The claw. All right, now. Let's see how long before we take away the claw drops. <laughs> <laughs> Kalen. Yeah, we can't. We, we, we're not, this is not Russia. We're going to have to see people, if enough people do the right thing. Is this Russia? It's not Russia. Enough people do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kalen, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Some flicking the beat. We all want to know what they What they Opinions what we need We need So Kaylin get on that mic That mic and flick the bean Oh Kaylin Flick the bean Respect all women (laughs) No outro (laughs) Today I'm going to be reviewing Ghost of Tsushima the video game. I knew, uh, I knew that there was something weird coming when you told Dawson no director. I'm so yeah. glad you clarified. I thought it was. Well, a I didn't place. say. That. I know it sounds delicious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Ghost of Tsushima is available on PlayStation only. So unless you have a PlayStation, you're not gonna be able to play it. PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five. It came out back in July. It's developed by Sucker Punch Productions. It's an open world third person action game where you play as Jin Sekai. A samurai on a quest to protect Tsushima Island during the first Mongol invasion of Japan. <clears throat> wow. And it was announced in March that a film adaptation is in the works with John Wick director Chad Stahelski. Ooh. Cool. <laughs> he still mentioned a director, this, though. That's why that, I said kind of. Is that the guy who directed Mr. Nobody? No, no. Oh, okay. That was the writer of John Wick. Ah, oh, I see. Um, it has a 83 out of 100 critic score and a 9.2 out of 10 user score on Metacritic, which is like the Rotten Tomatoes for video games. Do we trust Metacritic we for do. video games? Absolutely. We do for video games, and I would say Metacritic is more accurate than Rotten Tomatoes ever has been. Yeah. Ah. You get above kind of eight, eight and a half, you're, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. All right, so that's my, fav- my second favorite rating system then. Yeah, absolutely mine too. Agreed. Phelan, how'd you hear about this game? Um, well, I first... 
became aware of this game back it's like a loaded question there yeah, it is. <laughs> i was trying to remember from like four or five years ago. ago yeah i yeah i became aware of this game back in like 2017 2018 and i absolutely love samurai shit uh i am putting all my chips behind samurai, I love samurai in hunger- shit too i saw him at the echo <laughs> <laughs> fucking totally <laughs> two summers on ago <laughs> totally stepped on oh it. wait no oh. he stepped on it Doss. i'm sorry dude. oh wait let's reset <laughs> I fucking love samurai shit. I'm putting all my chips behind samurai in Hunger Dome Sword Edition, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I also had Beatrice Kiddo in the original Hunger Dome. So ah, I yes. am pretty obsessed with samurai stuff. Um, and I waited for this game to come out for so long and followed all the others, as well as Gary. Anytime anything Ghost of Tsushima came out, I immediately ran to Gary. Uh, and then in March, I discovered Call of Duty Warzone, which... Um, I was also playing on a PC for the first time in, like, a decade. And so I became so obsessed with Warzone that I didn't care about Ghost of Tsushima anymore. Meanwhile, you had a colleague who was coming into work once a day and mm-hmm. basically holding you down and screaming at you that you had to play this <laughs> fucking game. Yeah. I was too obsessed with Warzone. I couldn't... I, I just had no... I, I had no interest in anything other than Warzone. I, so, I know, and it was bending my mind. <laughs> um, but this past, like, end of March, early April, I... Fell off of Warzone. Came to your this senses. Is new. This yeah. is news. I, I don't play Warzone anymore. Um, How you doing over here, Matt? <laughs> I thought I put what is going on over right. there. <laughs> Scrolling through his ringtones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is thoroughly boring, Kaylin. So, no, I'm kidding. Um, I decided on my birthday, April 11th, that I was finally going to play this game. Finally. Finally. Did you sneak that in there just so we know when your birthday is? No, I wanted an accurate timeline of how long I've been playing this game for. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Uh, because I beat the game yesterday, and it took me 80 hours. Mm. That was the pretty solid. Final logged gameplay time was 80 hours. Did right, you end up do doing... A, can I do a quick Gary talk here? Yes. Don't ever do that again. You do not need a recorded record of how many hours you've yeah. been playing a video game. Don't do that. Yeah, I it'll, think it'll that, upset you. Oh, well, the first time it really upset me was household. when I... <laughs> When I checked my World of Warcraft characters back in the day. And oh. I had, like, a week. And I was like, all right, I got, I'm going to stop playing this game now. Oh, really? But, People should know how long it kind of takes to beat a game, and it, it doesn't take 80 hours to beat this game. So if I started now, I could probably beat it before my birthday, November 19th. Mm. Definitely before my birthday, the December 15th. <laughs> okay, you might have know. a hard time with my birthday, September 8th. <laughs> yeah, that'd I be see. cutting it close. Okay. I'm old. <laughs> um, this game took me a little longer because I was really obsessed with doing all the different side missions, and I was playing it on hard. There's easy, medium, hard, and extra hard. So he called the clock. Like, <laughs> you can find the specific movie one, but you don't know which quadrant you're going to play. <laughs> Label better, Chris. Jeez. Underscore L. Um. <laughs> Uh, Kalen was Kalen was coming to me and reporting, giving me like mini uh, flickins on this game. Yeah, every I few was. Weeks. Yeah, it was just I wasn't going to do it every day, but it was, every few it was days. at the right time. It was, it was the right the amount. Game. And I will just I might get into it later, but you handled it perfectly. Like, ex- well, you didn't really explain anything. You just said like, "Yep, that was great. I remember that." And then that was about it. But um, which was the right thing to do. It's all you can really do yeah. without ruining it. Um, yeah. So I played it on hard, which in my opinion, was just the perfect... It was the perfect balance of challenging without getting too frustrating, although I did get very frustrated at times. I played it on regular, and I wish I played it on hard. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's that good that I would like. I would have liked it to take longer. Mm. And uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal game. It's hands down the most beautiful video game that I've ever played. Did you cry? Uh, you could have. Uh, I almost. Um, not only is the action, by which killing Mongols, I mean... How's More, the sex? No sex. Oh. It's so satisfying, like, defeating enemies. More satisfying than any other game. Um, but the amount of customization within the game is absolutely incredible. From armor, sword kits, additional weapons, moves, abilities. It does a perfect job at having so much additional content that you unlock as you progress through the game. Content. Yes. Content. <laughs> also, the story is awesome. There's the main storyline and then like a handful of B storylines and then a ton of C storylines, which are just kind of one-off missions. Nice. Uh, they're all really good, except the C storylines can be very tedious and boring. Um, but I, I had to do them before I could continue back on the A storyline. Did I, you end up doing all the side missions? I did all the side missions before I completed the main mission because I, I don't know. I just had to. 
Um, and the main storyline is just an absolute roller coaster. The ending of the game is fantastic. It's, I would say, all around uh, the best single player game I've played in a long, long time. Definitely top five single player games. Mm. Maybe even top three. But I would really have to debate that in terms of Final Fantasy Seven. Fuck no. Chocobo. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Kaylin, we won't do it on the air, but you and I are going to have to have a top three conversation. I want to know what it is for you. Again, I don't know the order of it. Resident Evil 2. Four. Oh. Resident Evil 4, The Last of Us, and I think Ghosts of Tsushima are my top three single player games. Out, but I don't know the more. order in which that goes. You're missing The Last of Us 2. I said The Last of Us 1. I know. <laughs> Look at you they guys. They should both be top three. Mm, You're really going to waste one third of your list? On the same game <laughs> franchise, I might. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I might. I mean, get some variety here. Have some variety, man. Well, that's right. There's some more Last of Us conversation coming up in a minute. So you mean we on. haven't heard the Last yeah. of Us? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> if you've uh, just skipped ahead, skip ahead a, a few more fifteen Go seconds back. at a time. Um, I love your show. <laughs> Also, I just got to mention how good the game mechanics are. It's, it's it's so good that there's a lot of moments where it could have potentially been very frustrating to like navigate through the world. I don't know how they did it, but when your character like gets stuck or is about to get stuck, they fix it seamlessly. So that aspect of the game never really gets annoying. I hate getting stuck. Yeah. Yeah, getting lost on those huge fucking maps. Mm-hmm. There's, there, there's a lot of potential for that, but they did a good job at making sure that doesn't happen. Not a perfect game, though. The first thing you wouldn't walk out to it if you were yes. pitching a baseball <laughs> game. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Just absolutely. <laughs> Just a plus. Chris, can you cue up the theme for the guests <laughs> of uh, Sushi Mora? Sushima. Sushima. Can you guys imagine all of this plus outros? <laughs> uh, so the first thing that annoyed me about the game was how good the weather and clock system is. It was annoying? <laughs> it was annoying because it's so good, but the game is so beautiful. So whenever it's raining or nighttime, I would get frustrated because I wanted it to be daytime and bright and sunny so I could mm. look at how beautiful the game was. Mm. It's raining a lot, and the game isn't nearly as beautiful when there aren't all the bright colors around. So <laughs> it annoyed, that That's, annoyed but me. See, I, I, I got to disagree a little bit here, only in that saying the raining parts of it are so accurate for if it was actually raining that that is almost beautiful enough in itself. It rains yeah. too much. Fine. That's what I was Fine. wondering. Have been to Japan before? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, I'm saying it's very accurate. It's, it's, very, it's too accurate. They need mm. to dial back the he accuracy. He wants a little more now. Hawaii and a little less. Oh, I know. Thank I, you. I'd kill him coming to work and be like, he'd be like kind of bummed. I'm like, what's going on? It's like, it's raining. <laughs> You're like, no, dude, it's nice it. outside. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's 75 outside. Uh, I was also disappointed by how easy the end of the game was. Um, the whole game from the jump. <clears throat> Sorry. You're trying to take down, like, essentially the main bad guy, the leader of the Mongols, and the last boss fight was really easy. Hmm. Oh. It, now, I, I asked you this off air, but do you feel like because you completed all of the side missions, you had, like, a fully upgraded character, that's why it was so easy? If you had just played storyline, maybe it would have been a little harder in the end. It probably would have been a little harder if I didn't have the best like sword upgrade and armor upgrades but by the time you get there even in the main story you should pretty much have that um but that being said i would have the best sword and the best armor that you can get but i would still fight people there's a great system in the game where throughout the game you have like little you have like you know things that you can throw at the enemy there's a lot of different ways to defeat them but there's essentially duels (laughs) where it's one-on-one and you can't use any of those things. So you're ri- relying entirely on, you know, just your sword and whether or not to block or dodge cool. or hit at the right time to defeat them. And there are a lot of really difficult duels that took a lot of time. And then the last one, I didn't I didn't even die once. I just got right through it, and that kind of bugged me. I was really expecting... Yeah, you, you have to, you have to like, times. learn an enemy's, like, motions and what to do when they do this and how, really? to, how to counter properly. And the main... It, he didn't really have that like some of the other harder duels in the game. Was your sword already made of Valerian steel by then? It had been for quite yeah. a while. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Um, and finally, just the AI isn't up to the level that The Last of Us 2 was. The, um, the AI can be really stupid at times, and The Last of Us 2 just completely raised the bar when it comes to AI and video games. Well, what year did this take place? 
Well, they both came yeah, out at the same time. Super realistic, though. But they didn't have AI back <laughs> yeah. in feudal Japan. Come on. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right? That's what you meant, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. Exactly that's, that's exactly right, Matt. Yeah, The Last of Us 2, it just, how intelligent your opponents are, it just became like a whole different thing when they would hide from you when you're hiding from them so that you couldn't like sense them with like your spidey senses kind of thing, which is also in Ghost of Tsushima. And Dude, you get to be a Spider-Man <laughs> fucking samurai? I've got to play this game. They See? would hide from you and they would like try to look for you and again, they The Last of Us 2 just set a, a new bar uh, also customizing how difficult you want the game the last of us 2 has this whole incredible system that uh it's yeah just kind of changed how i see video games so this ai is kind of disappointing uh but overall such an enjoyable time playing the game that i'm actually sad now i have been sad for the past two days mm. and i think i will continue to be sad for quite a while Kaylin? that's probably why you fucked up your beard that, oh interesting yeah Kaylin, I have really Insight. bad news for you. I, I don't know when I finished that game. It was several months ago. I'm still sad. Yeah. I have not found a game to play that is remotely satisfying. Yeah, I wish I had an answer, or I wish that there was another game that could slightly hold up to what this game was, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like there is. Um, flickable. Sure. 9.4 out of 10. Whoa. Beats the daughters, I'll take Beats it. Beats the daughters, yeah. yeah. I'll take it. I do yeah, not dude. beat my daughters, for the record. No, I, well, you, you <laughs> surpassed your daughters, and... Uh, I'm okay with that. Boom. Ghosts of Tsushima. Tsushima. All right. But yeah. It's spelled with a T. And was it last episode in Patreon where we talked about best sword fighters? We're gonna do. Are we gonna do this? Are we gonna do the uh, the next hundred Hunger Dome Sword Edition? I was waiting for the. We gotta do it. I was waiting for the artwork, but we gotta yeah. do it. I think we should do it. We, Hunger we, Dome we, Sword Edition. We might do the Sword Edition. It's gonna be Patreon exclusive. Now that the cheese ball. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. You know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it. You were behind the fence with me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, great, great job, Kaylin. It feels weird not doing an outro, but it also feels right. Yep. It's good. So we're going to do Hunger Dome Crossing Swords, right? That's how we're going to call it. <laughs> well, now we have to. Oh, now we have to. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. Do you want to, uh, you ready for some Shay? I am, but I feel like we're running long here. Dawson keeps sighing into the microphone. He has been doing that. to wrap it. He has been doing that. I'm happy to do it. Right. You know I, cracked, I cracked a fresh claw, so I can get through a show. Okay. Get through. <laughs> That's what you want to hear before your <laughs> segment. I can get through this. Look, yeah. it was the video Pretty game weird. talk. We just talked. We just spent 30 minutes on video games, and that's. I wish it could have been longer. That just killed me. No, I wish it could have been longer. It should have been longer. You know, Kalen got sad. He didn't want it to end. That's how I felt about that review. I'm sad that it's over too. Yeah. Sorry, but that that drained my spirit. Dawson, that review deserved at least half an hour, half again as much time as it got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do more material from this set today. All right, you ready, Matt? Fuck yeah, bro. Oh no! What type of foods might we hear of today? What might be the price? Well, what might be the venue? Yeah, so let's find good. out. It's time for Gary to say, "Hey, Matt." What's on the menu? Well, it is my wife's birthday. Happy hey! birthday. Hey! She doesn't listen to this. Roo, roo. Don't worry. She doesn't listen to this. Um, That's why I'm insuring. This, <laughs> this past weekend, we went out for a lovely birthday dinner to a new restaurant I'd never been to before in South Pasadena. It was a French restaurant. South Pass. South Pass. In Sopa. Okay. Sopa. How about Bropa? <laughs> Bropa. <laughs> it's called... You guys want to go to dinner in Bropa? Yeah. <laughs> this place is called Bistro de la Gal. De la Gal. Which I learned means Bistro of the gal. Uh, no, it means uh, mm -hmm. it's a bistro by the train tracks. Oh. And people don't think of Los Angeles as a train city because it's definitely not. But in this particular part of Bropa, there is, in fact, the yellow line. And so while we were dining outdoors, we would see a little train go by every once in a while, which was mm. very uh, quaint. It was very ah. nice. Added to the atmosphere. That's cute. Had a very French meal. We started with some escargot. Oh, yeah. Chris I've never had escargot not, not in on the a cruise water. ship. Yes. <laughs> not on a cruise ship. Escargot de Bourgogne. 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 Yeah. Bourgogne. It's a good thing she has listened to this. Bourgogne. It's traditional snails. You got the butter, mm -hmm. the garlic, the fresh herbs. They come served on this. It's like a round plate that has little divots in it. And then they usually, and this is on the cruise ship Bourgogne. too. They put the little, the little snail and all the juices and stuff into the little divot. Yeah. Right, and then you have like a little mini they give fork. You a, it's a divot plate. Yeah. It's like a divot plate. I don't For know. Chris how is just a fork. What <laughs> <laughs> to Chris is a full size fork, but to the rest of us, a tiny fork. And this place, they came out so fucking hot that when you 
uh, pushed it into the, the snail and pulled it up, it was like an oil pop. And ah. actually ended up getting, like, burn oil on my wrist. That's how fucking hot it was. It was like McDonald's when they spilled the coffee on you. I just threw oh, it yeah. in my mouth. I you love ever escargot. Escargot. My mouth is watering. I love escargot. Don't, didn't we have it on the cruise? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did. We were, was we actually were just good. talking about that, like, 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. right. You see, Dawson? <laughs> so, look. There's a video when I game. say I don't listen to podcasts, <laughs> I really mean it. Yeah, Even the one I like, yeah. you're currently recording. You're really committed. Can I propose yeah. some shit you do as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> now, for the main course, <laughs> my wife and I each had a different duck meal. Mm. Someone had to have had La Ronge. Now, Taffy they didn't have La Ronge. Confit. They did. I would have gotten that. My wife got the duck confit, which is her confit. go-to. That means it's cooked in its own fat. Yeah, that it's like the awesome. dark meat. It's got the crispy skin on it. Yeah. I've talked about it a bunch of times in Chez Fonvoy segments. Very uh, common dish ordered on yeah, Chez that shit. Yeah, But I had Peking duck. the duck magret, which I'm definitely not saying right. But this was seared duck breast. So it was almost like sliced tri-tip. It was like duck tri-tip that was served with green beans and fingerling potatoes. I'd eat it. It was fucking delicious. What's fingerling potatoes? Like the, they're like small mini little yeah. potatoes. potatoes. Little they look, yeah. they okay. look more like thumbs than fingers. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly. accurate. That's very accurate. Um, usually, you know, they slice it in half, cook it in some garlic and herbs and stuff. It was very flavorful. It was really, really good. The dessert, tart tartan. Tartan. Tart tartar. Which yeah. is Tartar-sauce? basically <laughs> like an apple tart that they build and cook upside down. So they put all the apples at the bottom of the pan, the pastry on top, and then when it's served, they flip it over so that the pastry is on the bottom. But it leads to the apples getting like super caramelized, and this was out of this world delicious. And the most memorable part of the night was as we were wrapping up, finishing up dessert. Again, we were all seated outside. It's a quaint little part of the neighborhood. There's like a stop sign right by the table's where everyone's dining, and then a Tesla pulls up and unleashes a gigantic fart sound effect because the oh, Tesla yes, they do can that. fart. They have this, yeah. Now, I had knowledge of this, and I don't know how many other tables did. It's really a My whoopee cushion. definitely did not know what the fuck was going on, but this like romantic <laughs> dinner was, uh, was accentuated by a giant farting car, and then I had to explain that this is 2021, and you can program your car to fart. Yes, one of the many reasons why I need a Tesla. Yeah. If oh, anyone wow. wants my referral code, <laughs> hit me up on Twitter. I can... um, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I can try to find a video of Randy, who has talked about on this show numerous times, crying laughing for about five minutes as we drove home. And I set my turn signal to be a fart. And every time I would turn my turn signal on, my car would fart. <laughs> he thought that was the funniest thing in the world. It really doesn't get old. Um, so it was an amazing meal, actually. Um you know, just a couple dishes, but each one was really distinct and definitely go back there again. Bistro de la Gare. De la Gare. De la Gare. And that's what's on the menu. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know what I love about this one? There's no dice. Mm-hmm. But there's de la Gare. There's also no outro. It's yeah, weird. I noticed that. It's very quiet. Very uh, quiet, very weird, but that's how there. we do it now. Yeah. So th- um, nice job, man. And I'm, I'm really hungry now. I want, <laughs> I want, I want uh, uh, duck and duck fat really bad. Now, Matt, I have a question. Good. Did anyone at the restaurant start laughing when that happened? Oh, yeah. I mean, we were cracking up. Okay. It was hilarious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, it was a French <laughs> restaurant. They were all like, I thought it might be upside assholes. Yeah. That's yeah, below them. I mean, there yeah. were there had to have been at least one couple who had no idea what was going so imagine, on. You know, like for this... a country, sorry to interrupt, but for a country yeah, who that? is offended <laughs> by things like this, for a country who is offended by things like this yeah. and loves Jerry Lewis, mm. it's like those two things clash. Like, French people, you're full of shit. Well, just think about the take the, that Lepore. the French chef, <laughs> uh, you know, third generation in France, like hunt, telling his wife, "Honey, we're moving to America. I'm going to open my own restaurant." Can you do out an there. accent. Do it an accent. Oh no! Oh, we moved to I America. Need, a, need more biggie. 
Is this one of the Mongols in uh, Kiyo's video game? It sounds game? just like him. <laughs> <laughs> we moved to America, and I shall open my own restaurant. With, and, with, my, with my family, my family, my, my family's meals that I've learned over the years. Fun! Generations of food, escargot. Let's go. And then he opens a restaurant with Tesla's like... <laughs> <laughs> like just farts all over, like as it turns. It's the American dream, baby. It's the American dream. Yep. That's what I. That's what it feels like. But thanks, uh, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elon. All right, that'll do it for water cooler today. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. Let's get our plugs in, and then we'll let uh, Matt get to his lovely wife for her birthday. Yep. Kalen, we'll start with you, my friend. What should we check out? Oh, don't worry about me. You don't have plugs. You don't like music. What's I going on? I don't have strong about feelings music. about music. All right, I'm not a monster. You don't, have a show you're on? you don't have a show you're on where people can subscribe to the Patreon or something? Oh, that's wonderful. That we're currently recording? Yeah. This is the that one. you're already listening yeah, to. The, uh, <laughs> done. Okay. For so the, we're going to miss, Kalen. For the record, Kalen, I've seen him react to a song uh, that uh, the most. So I think that might be his f- most perfect song. It's No Scrubs by TLC. Mm. It's a great one. Yeah, you great seem song. to really yeah. enjoy that song. All right. It's the bottom of the ninth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's featured in the Bropanos. Or the Sobronos. The Sobronos. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> right I don't know, man. I'm a big fan of waterfalls. Bottom of the ninth. Coach is pulling out his pitcher. It's time to say goodbye to Cooper. He's had a nice game today, but that arm is tired after 111 pitches. We go to the bullpen. Who, who's coming up? Kalen Bean. Is that Michael Bean? Take and now, now, John Connor. <laughs> Number double zero. <laughs> Pitching out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Let's make it loud and proud. Los Angeles hometown. Welcome aboard. Kalen <laughs> Amazing. Oh, yeah. like shit. It. I like it. I like it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about this. This is amazing. You know, I'm going to change my belt. This is a perfect song. Yeah. <laughs> I can see Ken Walker. He's like the kind of guy that he has his ear pods so in good. too. And uh, yeah, so he walks good. Out. That's pretty good. Yeah, that would work. All right, that That's going to be hard to beat. <laughs> All right, Gary, where should we go for you? What was uh, that? What was that? Listen to Reasonable Doubt uh, and Beyond Reasonable Doubt, now new on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And go subscribe to youtube.com slash reasonable doubt podcast. All right. Make sure to do that. We know you guys are on YouTube. You should subscribe and uh, and enjoy Gary on, on a lot more of those shows. Matt, sub two. Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Matt Fondelier. And as mentioned before, please check out patreon.com slash watercooler. You're giving us each one buck a month for some amazing content. That's at a minimum. You can, of course, give us more if you got that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, at a minimum. If you got that model of money, we'll take your yeah, six. Exactly. We'll take a little more. Just do, what, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, I... I don't know how you are all not subscribed to the second one because nine times out of ten we're referring to shit that happened in another episode. Matt, so, yeah. You know. To your point, the majority of people listening right now have no idea why cheese ball is going away. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, if you want to see, if you want to hear someone watch their dreams, <laughs> if you want to watch the death of Matt's Die. child, yes, yes. and then watch them disemboweled in front of you. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's only then, a dollar a month it's for only each of us. A dollar a month to watch a young child's boy. <laughs> dreams come and crushed there, and there are so many other tears yep yeah but uh yeah seriously please sign up for our patreon we'd love you for it yeah. and definitely get the video to watch matt's child die yeah <laughs> oh my god i can't think of a oh fuck oh we love you though thank yeah. you find out what happened to the cheese ball in patreon yeah, all right I'm very afraid of the comments for the next episode <laughs> very uh, first of all a hunger dome crossing swords coming to a theater near you wow. my money's on the night Theater oh, of the, really? Theater of the mind. Second of all, Jam in the Van, Saturday, uh, I did stand up with Brad Williams two nights in a row. I did good, but today's miracle is tomorrow's expectation. Yes. So the stakes are really fucking high for Saturday night, and you can come and watch me either fucking go into glory or completely fucking fail. AdamCarolla.com has tickets. And... Meet a bank robber. Oh, Richard yes. Stanley's going to be out there. I'm totally stoked. He's bringing a crystal. We're going to have a good time. 
and um, get his books, the Up On Game series, if you read them. They're fucking scary, dude. There's some real serious fucking jail shit and some bank robbery shit. And book two, book two will fucking blow your tits off. All right, so, so good. Make sure to check out Richard Stanley at <laughs> Jam in the sorry, Van, Lorley. I'm and he's sorry. bringing Crystal Meth. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, all right. Did and- I say Meth? <laughs> I meant Crystal, his his wife. <laughs> You did say Crystal. I'll just, um, and I'll be there, too, and I'll be playing some acoustic songs, doing something that I'm a closing little more, time? more comfortable with. Maybe I'll play some closing He's time. He's going to do some Neil Diamond. Some Neil Diamond. That's right. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a fun show. Also, I'm playing at Tantalum in Long Beach Wednesday, May 26th. 26th. And uh, that's yeah, right. That's that, right. Yeah. <laughs> Great news to you. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I'm playing at Marina Wine in Long Beach, the 28th and 29th uh, Memorial Day weekend, Friday, Saturday, seven to ten for Marina Wine, and then Tantalum. It's like six to nine something. So come out and uh, and hang. All right, that'll do it for the water cooler. Thank you again, to everybody, for listening, for for joining our Facebook group, for commenting, and just being a part of the show. We couldn't be more thankful. And, uh, and more appreciative of all of you. So we appreciate you, as I said, and we'll see you for the Patreon show later this week. We love you. Bye. Later. <laughs>